Hello, this video is going to be about writing and balancing chemical equations. I had a request for a step-by-step -step with examples, so that is what we are going to do. First of all, these are my five easy steps to balancing any chemical equation. Uh, step one is to always write the skeleton equation. This could also be thought of as writing it in terms of the chemical symbols or the chemical formulas. I combine steps two and three. Uh, in this, you were going to count the number of each reactant, so that would be step two. And then step three would be to count the number of each product. Step four is to compare those numbers of atoms that you just counted on each side of your equation and then balance it if necessary. Uh, step five is always, always, always to double check your work. So here's our example. We're going to go over writing and balancing. Our problem is magnesium metal and oxygen gas yield magnesium oxide. So step one is to write the skeleton equation or again, write it using those chemical formulas for each of these reactants and the product. Our first reactant says that it's magnesium metal. The question you need to ask yourself is, is this an element or a compound? Since it's by itself and it tells me that it's magnesium metal, this is how I know that it's an element. Since it's an element, I'm going to go to the periodic table, grab that chemical symbol, and that is the only thing that I am going to insert for magnesium metal. So I will write Mg for magnesium metal's role in my skeleton equation. Next, we see the word and. Anytime you see a word that says and or with or combines, that's going to be the mathematical symbol equivalent for a plus sign. Next, we have oxygen gas. Again, we need to ask ourselves, is this an element or a compound? Since there's nothing else with it and it's in its gaseous state, we know that oxygen in our reaction is going to just be an element. We write elemental oxygen as O2 every time because this is one of our seven diatomic elements. Remember, your diatomic elements exist in pairs in nature because they are so highly reactive, so they will always be written with a subscript 2 in their elemental forms. The next section of our reaction says that this yields. Yield, to produce, to form, decompose, any of those action words tell you that you're going to represent using this arrow symbol. Finally, our last section is magnesium oxide. This is our product. We need to determine, is this an element or a compound? I see that this is two different things that are combined. So this is not an element. This is not one thing. This is a combination of two things. So this is a compound. When we have a compound, we need to decide if this compound is ionic or if it's covalent. This is going to help us name our compounds. Some tips for figuring out if it's ionic or covalent. If it is a metal and a nonmetal, that'll be ionic. If you have a nonmetal and a nonmetal, that'll be covalent. Another way that I like to look at this is if I see any prefixes like mono, di, tri, those are only going to appear my, my covalent molecules. So I don't see any of that here. Magnesium is a metal. Oxygen is a nonmetal. So I know that this is going to be an ionic compound. Since I have an ionic compound, I'm going to use my naming rules for those. So that means I need to use my ions. When naming an ionic compound, since I have the name in words, 
I know that I am going to use my magnesium ion and my oxide ion. So what I do is I will write those just to make sure that I'm going to put my compound correctly into my skeleton equation. Remember, an ionic compound has to have a net charge equal to zero. The charge for my magnesium ion is two positive. My charge for my oxide ion is two negative. When I add those two numbers together, I have two positives and two negatives. So that already adds up to a net charge of zero. That means I only need one of each ion in my final compound. So when I write my final compound, I will just use one magnesium and one oxide ion to represent magnesium oxide. This is our final skeleton equation. Once you get to this point, you can't change the small numbers, those subscript numbers, as they appear. So you'll look for all of these, look to see if there are any small numbers. The reason we can't change these numbers is because if we change those numbers, we're actually changing the identity of the chemical, and then our name that we worked so hard to go through and do all of these for would no longer match that chemical formula. So once you get your skeleton equation, you will not change any of these subscript numbers. Our next step is to balance. We've done the writing, now we're going to finish by balancing. So step two, we want to count our reactants. Step three, we count our products. And step four, we will compare and balance using uh, coefficients. Remember, we can't use subscripts to change anything. Remember, in a chemical reaction, reactants will always be on your left. Products will always be on your right. Um, if you're more visual, if you're a more visual learner, it might be helpful to draw a chart for yourself until you get the hang of these. So in your chart, you want to include each of the uh, things that you need to balance, as well as a column for reactants and a column for products. So in doing this, we're going to count our reactants first. I usually go left to right. That's the way I'm used to reading things. So that's what I'm going to do for my reactions equations also. So I see one magnesium atom on the left, on the reactant side. On the product side, I also see one magnesium atom. So right now I have one on the left and one on the right. So right now magnesium's balanced. Next we have oxygen. I have two oxygens on my reactant side. On my product side, I only have one oxygen. So right now these two numbers, I have two on the left and one on the right. So that means this is not balanced. We are going to balance using coefficients we can't change how many atoms are in our compound, but we can change how many compounds participate in our reaction. So in order to get two oxygens on my product side, I'm going to multiply this whole compound by a coefficient of two. Just like in algebra, if I have two in front of something, that will apply to both the magnesium and the oxygen. It'll apply to the cation and the anion. So this takes care of the two oxygens that I needed for my product side, but look what it does to our magnesium. Now we have two magnesiums on our right side, and we still only have one magnesium on the left. So we need to go back and put a coefficient of two in front of our magnesium on our reactant side also. This brings us to two magnesiums on the left, two magnesiums on the right, so now we're balanced. 
Step five is to always double check your work. What that means, check to make sure I have magnesium metal. Is that what I have in my skeleton equation? I have oxygen gas. Does this match? Magnesium oxide, is this correct? I have two magnesiums on the left and two magnesiums on the right, so that's balanced. I have two oxygens on the left and two oxygens on the right. So this is balanced. All of my reactants match the words. All of my products match their words. So this is fully correct. If you have any other questions, please just send me an email and I will be more than happy to answer your questions. I hope this was helpful. Um, thank you for listening and good luck on your tests.